night. And that's, uh, there are a hundred people, a hundred men there approximately. And that was the, the number of pe uh, men who took the ship back from Okinawa to San Francisco. There were 300 and about 370 uh, men on that ship during the battle. And approximately a hundred of them uh, were wounded. We had 150 Purple Hearts, actually. 151 Purple Hearts on the ship, including uh, about 40 who were killed in action. Now that doesn't mean they were killed instantly. Right then and there they died within a day or so, and we consider them to be killed in action. That's good enough. Uh, so we lost 40, and uh, another 100 and whatever um, wounded. And they uh, they went, they jumped over the side, they fell over the side, they they were uh, forced over the side because we wanted to get them off the ship in case the ship sunk. And they were picked up by other ships around us and taken from there to hospital ships, hospitals ashore, and wherever they could get them to for medical attention. Some of them, of course, didn't make it. Ooh, let's see, what else we got here? Statistics, which won't stop. And, uh, oh, yeah, thank you. This, um, this photo here is an LSM, landing ship medium, there. And it's going around picking up our men who are in life rafts or life nets or just swimming. The waters, fortunately, that day were calm. It was cloudy, but the water was calm. And they could pick up the men and return the, uh, the uh, uninjured ones to the ship and take the others to other ships where they were uh, then transported to uh, hospitals and hospital ships, wherever they could get to. Here we have the, the, one of the screws, one of the propellers of the Hadley jammed into the rudder. And this is the, in, during our repair in our dry dock, showing the, the, the uh, repair work on the side of the ship to cover up the the hole as the plane went through. And here we have the bottom of the ship, the, the uh, 56 inches that the, uh, the uh, keel was raised because of the explosion of the 500 pound bomb. And I think that just about covers all the display we have here. And if you would go over about the uh, flag, and your reconstruction of that, if you could tell that story. Uh, oh, or here? Oh, oh yeah, sure. <clears throat> uh, shortly after the battle, say within a week after the battle or so, uh, the, some of the sailors couldn't resist painting on the side of the ship 25 Japanese flags signifying the 25 that we had shot down. 23 of them uh, on an hour, in an hour and 40 minutes the other two were in other skirmishes uh, against the uh, kamikazes a few days or a week or two before that. So we took credit for two separately and then 23 in an hour and 40 minutes. So they put that on the, on the side of the ship, painted on there. We were all very proud of it, of course. Then when we got to San Francisco and were decommissioned, they didn't want to destroy that. So it was cut out with a welding torch cut out down here, over here, up here, and across the top. And uh, it was saved and sent to Mrs. Hugh W. Hadley, who was the wife of the man for whom this ship was named, Hugh w., Commander Hugh W. Hadley. He was killed in action in September of 1942 in the Solomon Islands. And this ship was named for him because of his heroic actions in, in uh, saving the ships if he could but he didn't. They were surprised by Japanese forces and they didn't have radar then as we do now. Uh, so he lost his, his ship and others. And um, anyway, she got this big, big piece of steel here and um, kept it at her home for years. Uh, her daughters and she attended some of our reunions and uh, after 1970 when we had our first one. And talking about reunions for a second, we've had 19 reunions since 1970, 
and that's all we're going to have because um, there are no other officers on the ship. I'm the only surviving officer, and there are very few enlisted personnel, perhaps a dozen, and uh, most of them are unable to travel, and uh, so we've canceled all, uh, all future reunions. Anyway, Mrs. Hadley kept this big piece of steel in her home and eventually by her daughters after she, was, after she uh, passed away, they put it out in the garden, laying up against a garden fence on, the island, on Coronado Island in San Diego. Coronado Island being in, in salt air all the time, this piece of steel didn't fare too well with the painting on there. Paint chips fell off like bad on into the mud of the garden and were just left there for years. And when I finally got down there to talk to them about it, and she said, uh, that one of the daughters said, oh, I think we should give that to you. So she and her son went out to the garden, pointed it out, covered with vines, hardly visible, and my heart just sank because it was so bad shape. And so they gave it to me and we picked it up, 150 pounds of it approximately, put it in the back of my station wagon or my, uh, my minivan actually. And um, I went back with an envelope and crawled around down at the base of where, the, where the, this steel piece of uh, steel was and gathered up little pieces of red and white paint, which had flaked off over the years. Took all of that up to my home in Danville and kept it on a work shelf in a, on a work uh, station in my project room and worked on it for about a year and cleaning it up very carefully with, sw with swabs and uh, alcohol and uh, soap and water and cleaning up the, the whole thing and then taking individual pieces of red and white paint, seeing if I could fit them in somewhere. And indeed it was possible to reconstruct this thing. Um, there were some of these flags were in fair shape, but some of them were bar, uh, hardly visible at all. But when I got through, this is what it looked like. That's the best I could do but there are 25 flags shown there, parts of them anyway. And then we took it to a reunion in San Antonio, and um, at the reunion we all decided after we took our pictures with, them, uh, with our, our own groups uh, next to the, uh, the uh, piece of steel, uh, we decided we'd give it to the museum for permanent storage. And today, if you go down there, it is encased in a glass sealed lighted case in, uh, embedded in the wall of the museum right across the, uh, the uh, room from the uh, display on the USS Hadley. And it has, uh, the main display is a, is a combat information center, which was my battle station. And there's a model of the ship there. The uh, final flag, which was flying over the ship when it was decommissioned. And um, generally a pretty, um, pretty nice display. The, uh, the radars in there were allegedly, I can't prove it, but allegedly came from the USS Hadley, but I can't say that for sure because I don't know. But that's what they told me. But, um, that's pretty much the story of the of the uh, ship. We uh, shot shot 801 rounds of five inch 38 in that one hour and 40 minutes. That's a lot of shooting. I don't remember how many thousand rounds of 40 millimeter and 20 millimeter we shot, but they were going all the time. Do you have any questions? I guess the only one is just how are you doing today and uh, what do you think about this uh, Veterans Center here, Doug? Oh my goodness. We are so fortunate to have this 
this Veterans Center here, and it's just loaded with all kinds of wonderful things. And I, I look around here and see this display on of women in the military. I've never seen that before. And I'm going to take it all in in just a few moments. And uh, personally, I'm, I'm uh, doing okay. I'm pushing age 94. Not there yet, but I'm getting there, and I think I'll make it. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good. I don't take any, pres any, prescri any prescription medicine, which is a sort of a, a marvelous thing. Well, give us so. your full name, your rank, and what ship you were on. Okay, I was, this was, I was on a, a destroyer prior to Hadley, the USS Bradford, but I consider that to be a training ship as far as I was concerned. We, uh, I got rid of my seasickness on the Bradford. <laughs> that was a terrible, terrible couple of days on the Bradford. But I somehow got accustomed to my legs at sea. And when I got aboard Hadley, I had no more seasickness at, at all. And uh, then uh, after the Hadley was over, I went on another ship temporarily. It was, a, believe it or not, it was a yacht. The yacht was a former... Um, uh, pleasure yacht for Max Flashman of Flashman Yeast Company. It dated from the mid 20s when it was made, when it was put together as reparation for World War I. But anyway, the Navy had it for a while and we uh, patrolled off the coast, uh, keeping track of airplanes and weather uh, coming into San Francisco. After that, I decided I wanted to stay in the Navy. So I switched from being a line officer to a supply corps officer in keeping with my major in college. And then during the 50s, during the Korean War, I went out on a seaplane tender in the, uh, in the Japanese waters and was out there twice for seven months at a time, never seeing my family in the meantime. And then uh, during Korea, then during Vietnam, I uh, had a great job on an aircraft carrier, USS Ranger, which is home port at Alameda. And we were out there for nine months at one, one deployment. And uh, that, was a, that was a great job. I was a, a commander at that time. And the month after I got off, the, uh, off that ship, I was promoted to captain, which was my final rank. I was an ensign when I was on the USS Hadley. As a young young buck at 22 years old, wow. and uh, now I, well after after my 31 years in in uh, uniform, I uh, went back to work again for the for the Navy. Instantly, I had been working for the Under Secretary of the Navy on a, on a bunch of special projects, and I continued working another 10 years for him. Uh, on other special projects, one of which was world famous, the uh, Glomar Explorer incident, which uh, many of you will remember. It was the raising of a sunken and lost Soviet submarine in mid-Pacific waters in 1974. It was partially successful in that uh, the submarine came apart because uh, it was lost in very deep water and it imploded when it sank and the Soviets did not know where it was. Had no idea where it was. But it was uh, resting at 17,000 feet. That's three miles straight down from the surface of the ocean. But we managed to get a good piece of it up. And uh, anyway, that was my, my Navy. Totally 42 years. Um, I'd do it all over again, folks, in a minute. And my wife would be with me, too. She loved the, the excitement of it. And we've been married 67 years. And we would be very happy to start everything all over again. Oh, now that's a happy ending. Now, um, go ahead and give us your full name, though, one more time. just for OK, that. well, my name is Douglas Gordon Aitken. Doug Aitken, by, by popular uh, no, no knowledge. And um, I live in uh, Aitken, A I T K E N. And then your wife's name? Oh, well, my, 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 my wife's name, she was Jean Maynard from Los Angeles, a Stanford grad, 
and I went to several universities during the war before I finally got got my degree, and uh, okay, so that's I, it. 